the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, I would like to reflect with you all the very base of our life. That's our faith. For me, I define faith or I understand faith, the concept of faith, with the help of three words. Faith means no fear. Faith means no doubt. The third one, faith means simply surrender. The Gospel of Matthew chapter 8 verse 23 and following. We have a passage, we have an incident where Jesus and his disciples were in the boat and as they were traveling, the account tells us that Jesus was lying down. He fell asleep and suddenly there was a storm. The disciples, they try to bring the boat under control, but they were unable. They tried their best. And what happens? When they lost the control over the boat, when the huge winds, the water, the waves, with that, they all got scared. And with that fear, they ran to Jesus. And tell him, Lord, get up. We are all perishing. So they run to Jesus. They make him to get up and tell him, we are perishing. I stop here. The question here to us to reflect is, how can the disciples perish when Jesus is with them? Well, if Jesus were not to be with them, we can understand the boat was, was not under their control. And as a result, because of the huge winds, because of the, 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 the huge waves, yes, the boat would sink. But that is not the case. When the creator of the sea and the wind and the water is with them, how could they perish? And this exactly happens with us in our day-to-day -day life. When we are encountered with our situations, with our struggles, with the situations where we have no control over them. We might be trying our best to, to bring the situation under control. And when the time comes, yes, we are really not, not able to face it. We are not able to control the situation. Probably we'll be running from this end to that end or to this place to that place or from one person to another person or it could be anywhere, wherever they could get the solution. And like, like the disciples might come to Jesus and say, save us, we are perishing. We Christians, we are baptized and the fact that we are all baptized, it simply means the promise of God is that God is with us. God is with us. And that's the word, Emmanuel, God is with us. If God is with us, how is that our boat can sink? How is that our boat can sing if God is with us? And that's what actually the word of God demands from us today. Believe that God is with you. If that is the case, there is no way that your boat, your life can sing. Because Jesus is with you. Because he is the creator and he has all the solutions for your problem. Do you believe in him? And that's the question. Jesus was with them in the boat. Yes, he was sleeping. Does that mean that his powers were dead? When, when it comes to our life and when we are faced with these difficulties, probably you may not see him, you may not feel him, you may not experience him. Does that mean that the powers of God are dead in our life? 
never. If, if, if that's the case, then God goes against his own word saying that I am with you till the end of time. And the word of God tells us again that God cannot go against his own word because he is a faithful God. So we need to believe in his word that he is with us. And that's what it means. Our faith means that we have to believe no matter what crisis we are in, no matter what circumstances we are in, that God is with us. Otherwise, he cannot be God because if he is not with us, that means his word has failed. And word cannot fail because God and his word is the same thing. And God is ever faithful and he will fulfill every promise and that's what we have to believe because no matter what crisis we come in but in the, in the situation what should be our approach the approach of the disciples here when they ran to Jesus they ran to Jesus in desperate condition Lord get out we are perishing the approach should have been you go to Jesus, wake him up, tell him, Lord, we have tried our best. Now, we cannot, you have to fight. You have to fight or you have to act. We cannot. You did not say, Lord, we are perishing, now help us. It's, that, is the, that is the approach where you find fear. And that's exactly the Lord said. Why, you, why are you afraid, O men of little faith? Now, here the word is little faith. As long as there is little faith and the rest of the life is empty, there will be always fear. In the journey of our life, our, the faith that we talk, it has to be a complete faith. Even if you give us little space or an empty space, that little space is enough for you to get scared in your life. Whenever you encounter situations, Whenever you encounter problems, that's the reason. We should be men and women, not of little faith, but complete faith. Not your 99.9 percent, .9 that 0.1 percent, that emptiness is enough for us to entertain fear in our life. And that little fear means the lack of faith. And that's what the Lord says. Why are you afraid, O man of little faith? So in our life, how is that we need to fill ourselves with complete faith just to believe that our God is with us. Just like the Lord Jesus was in the boat. And as long as Jesus is in the, is in the boat, that boat cannot sink because the Creator is in the boat and the water cannot overcome the Creator. Neither the wind overcome the Creator because it is Jesus, is the Savior who has created the wind and the, and the water. And so, believe our God is with us no matter whether you see him, no matter whether you feel him, no matter, matter whether you experience him. The fact remains, God is with us because that is his word. We go ahead. In the book of, uh, in the gospel of Matthew chapter 14, we get a, another similar experience. Now this time it happened, the, the disciples saw in the, in the middle of the night when Jesus was walking on the water. And Peter said, Lord, if it is you, let me walk. Now Peter here knows it very well that no human person can really walk on the water. It is not possible for a normal person. And by knowing that, he says, Lord, if it is you, it means, Lord, if it is you, means you, the creator, you means you, God. That means only with, with the help of God, I can walk. And that's what he says. Lord, if it is you, let me walk on the water. Because he knows it very, very well that human 
cannot walk on the water so it's only possible the extraordinary things can be possible only with god and that's why jesus was lord if it is you let me walk and the lord says come on walk peter looks at jesus he puts his leg one two and three and four as he puts his steps he knows it it's hard because he has total concentration on jesus at this moment because if it is you only with the providence of god only with the help of god only with the confidence of god he can walk and as he took some steps suddenly the approach in peter changes and what was the approach if it is you that approach changes now the approach is me suddenly peter thinks wow i am walking on the water it's me walking and as a result what happens he looks in the water he looks in the sky he looks around and at that moment he starts singing when he started to sing when he when his concentration was diverted towards himself on the self when we talk about faith the faith is not towards myself the faith is towards god it simply means we do extraordinary things in our life by holding the hand of god by knowing i cannot do this peter knew this right in the beginning i cannot walk it's only with the help of god it's only the help of jesus that he could walk which he was very much aware but at some point his concentrate concentration was diverted from god to himself and he thought i am walking and at that very moment he starts sinking i am walking at that very moment he starts sinking it simply means the connectivity with god was broken that that confidence and trust that he had with god i could walk that was broken he thought it is i who am i who is walking on the water and so that was the moment he asks for help lord save me again we have the same jesus says jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him saying oh you of little faith why did you doubt exactly the question here is doubt why did you doubt when the doubt comes when doubt come come to our mind only when we think from our perspective when the doubts come when i do a job or a work on my own abilities where i put my own uh, self there because myself can be easily i can lose my own energy i can lose my own strength therefore the doubts will come so as long as as we live in this world as we li- live our life and as we live as long as you have confidence in you definitely there will be a doubt and if you live your life in confidence with god or you have complete trust in god there cannot be doubt and that's exactly happened jesus asked him why did you doubt the doubt came to him when he his he concentrated on himself that i am walking if he were to continue concentrating no i am looking at jesus and with the power of jesus i'm i'm doing this work with the power of jesus and with his strength and with his energy that i am able to walk on the water that time he would not doubt because he's still clear i am with jesus the the moment he he took away the sight from jesus he thought of himself it is i am walking with his own capacity and as exactly it happens in our life the moment the moment we concentrate on ourselves there will be always doubts no matter 
how how much uh, uh, confidence you especially when it comes to the extraordinary things in our lives as long as you concentrate on yourself there will be always doubt but how strong you are how weak you are but you are a person who completely trusts god and there you will be doing extraordinary things like peter he was a simple man and he knew it is impossible to walk on the water but yet he could walk because he knew i can walk on the water with the help of god and that's what exactly i'm talking about what we call faith and when we talk about faith there cannot be slightest doubt if the moment a doubt comes to your mind the faith collapses and you cannot do extraordinary jobs like peter who walked on the water so we have first passage that explains to us about where there is fear there cannot be faith and here where there is doubt there cannot be faith so the simple thing simple understanding about a faith to me is faith means no fear faith means no doubt when the doubt comes when you when you depend on yourself peter was at the end depending on him himself and therefore there was a doubt so he was sinking we need to depend on god and that's it the moment you depend completely on god there cannot be any doubt in your life the moment you doubt there is a there is a failure no faith in you and same with the moment you get scared or there is a fear how can i do this or how will i do this or how will i face the situation the fact that you have a question there how and so you are anxious you are worried about future there is a fear and the fact there is a fear you have no faith so faith simply means no fear faith simply means no doubt it's complete surrender that's why gospel of matthew chapter chapter 6 tells us that when we when we trust completely in god it's god who provides and he strengthens us and he gives us his grace and his power i like to uh, take one more aspect of faith when it comes to gospel of john chapter 11 we are told about the the story of death of lazarus and purposely jesus comes to see martha and mary uh, two days later or three days later and when martha hears that jesus is on the way she runs to him to meet jesus and she says lord if you were to be here my brother would not die now let's take this word very clearly martha says to the lord lord if you were to be here my brother would not die and jesus says and even now i know that whatever you ask from god god will give you and jesus said to her your brother will rise again i know and martha said i know that he will rise again in the resurrection the last day and again as the passage goes uh, she says at the end yes lord i believe that you are the christ son of the living god he who is coming into the world so so martha actually confesses her faith in jesus martha conf- uh, confesses her faith in jesus and what happens when when all the episode of crying and weeping and the people talking about when jesus reaches to the tomb and tells the people to uh, take away the stone from the from the um, from the tomb at that moment martha now you see again again the, the faith of martha she rushes to jesus says lord it's late it must be, don't open the gate because the bo- body might have already rotten there may be sting there so please don't open the gate for me very interesting thing here is just now martha has confessed her greatest faith lord i know you are now you can do wonder this is what martha has it and suddenly she says don't open the stone now for me martha is challenging jesus who may she challenging jesus she says she has said that very clear yes you are the lord you are the christ i believe and 
Even now things are possible with you. And yet she says, don't open. It means the body is dead. It's already finished. It's already stinking. So don't open. She is actually challenging God. Because when we talk about death, death is nothing but end. So including, it looks that our own hopes are lost. And that's exactly, she is challenging Jesus, don't open it. In our life as well, when we, when we have done everything, including knocking at the doors of, of our God, and if there are no answers, we reach to a state called hopeless situation. And that exactly is the situation of Martha. Do not, she said to Jesus, because it is a hopeless situation. I was thinking, how can she challenge God? So listen, one, one thing. Every time when we say that, or when we reach to the state called hopeless situation, it simply means we challenge God or we tell the Lord, you and you cannot help. That's exactly is the understanding of hopeless situation. You are now, you cannot help this situation. Because this man has died and now the, even the body is rotten. We cannot reach to the hopeless situation. Maybe I am helpless or you, we are helpless. But God is never helpless. We are helpless. God is never helpless. So no matter what situations we are in in our life, if you believe, hang on to that. You trust in Jesus. No matter whether, as I said, whether you feel him, whether you see him, whether you experience him, his word and God the same and he will be with you. We cannot reach to the hopeless situation. And so today, as we understand the meaning of faith, it simply means, faith means no fear. Faith means no doubt. Faith means complete surrender. And we cannot afford to lose our hope. The moment we lose hope, yes, and that is the dangerous state that we reach, it simply means we challenge God saying that when you cannot do anything. No, God can do anything just like Jesus raised a dead man, Lazarus, to life. And so it is possible. Therefore, we Christians are Christians of hope. And therefore, there cannot be hope, a uh, loss of hope in our life. And that's what our faith gives us that courage to look beyond the things which we cannot see. And that's exactly the court talk about faith and hope. Therefore, once again, as I conclude, the simple meaning I understand about faith is, faith means absolutely no fear. Faith means absolutely no doubt. Faith means simply surrender. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end.